Good afternoon, everyone. We can start taking our seats in. There are a couple of people outside. Right. I would like to welcome all of you to this celebration of the life of Carol, who went to be with her Savior on the 30th of July. Carol was a dear friend and colleague of ours, and we are very honored to be here today. As we remember and reflect on her life, Maya Angela once wrote, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. Carol was one of those people who always made people feel loved and welcomed. She was always willing to step up and help people in need. She made everyone feel not just good, but important and valued. As her friends, colleagues, and family, we are still reeled with her sudden and unexpected passing. But looking out here today, 
at all the people that Carol loved. It is clear that even in death, she looks out for us. Her memory will remain in our hearts and minds. Let us now give praise by singing the first hymn, How Great Thou Art, after which Mr. Quirby Martin will come to the stage to do reflection. And while we sing, Mr. Kluter and Mr. Adwinas will please light the candles for us. We can stand. Welcome. Hearty welcome to everybody uh, from my side. Uh, to Carlo and the family, I don't know all your names, but I believe that you, we all are here uh, 
to share your pain and your loss. May God grant you the strength to go through all this. And in the times and days to come, that he will protect you and give you strength. Uh, people, everybody here to, today, I just want to start this uh, sermon uh, with the words from the Bible that the Lord laid on my, on my heart to share with you. There's a wonderful scripture in Revelation 10, uh, chapter 21. And I want to share this especially for the family before I speak to the rest of the audience. He will wipe away every tear from thy eyes. And death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making new things. Also he said, Write down this, these words are trustworthy and true. The words from David in Psalm 146 verse 3. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to you. For it is a pleasant and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord built Jerusalem. He gathers an outcast of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars and he gave, gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundantly is his power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lift up the humble and he cast the wicked to the ground. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we come to you in humbleness this afternoon as we are people and human beings with a lot of weaknesses and shortcomings. And the pain that comes with the losses that we have and especially the family this afternoon and during this a time of trial and testing. I ask for your strength and I ask that you wipe away their tears. Guide them because you are the great shepherd. I pray it in Jesus' wonderful name. Colleagues, brothers and sisters and everybody beloved, um, this is a very special moment when, when we share the word of God that we can take something home not only comfort us but also give us that that assurity that he never fails I want to say with you further a prayer of Moses if you know your Bible uh, many people will, will see that I didn't know that there was uh, actually Moses has uh, written one of the Psalms, and that is Psalm 19. And I'm not going to read the whole uh, of that chapter, but just a few verses from it. Psalm 19, a prayer of Moses, the man of God. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout the generations before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world from everlasting, you are God. Our days may come to 70 years or 80, if our strength endures. Yet the best of them is but a trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. And I just want to pause here. Our colleague and beloved and mother and family member, part of a team, she fly away. She's no more. She's no more with us. But I can assure you that 
our memories of her with, will last forever. I just want to leave you with this, the verse 12. Moses' experience, and if you go back to Numbers chapter 20, uh, I study the Bible, and I wonder where this psalm came from. And I read in Numbers chapter 20 that, and this psalm probably have connections with that time of testing and loss that Moses, the man of God and the prophet himself experienced. And that is when his beloved sister Miriam and his brother Aaron died. And he was alone. And if you know the story and the life of Moses, it was the two people very closest to his heart. Uh, Aaron was his priest, basically. And Miriam was his sister, a woman of strength. And he listened to people and many uh, speakers talking about the strong woman of the Bible. And Miriam was def will definitely be one of those, those women we, uh, they recalled, but they died, and probably he wrote this psalm in, during that time of loss, and he said, and he come to this conclusion and realization, in verse 12, he prayed to God, teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Based on the background and content of this prayer, I think it's safe to say that Moses came to the following insight. That our lifespan is but short and time passes rapidly compared to the eternity and greatness of the God of the universe. Therefore, we must be taught by God and learn to value time and make the best of every day granted by the grace of the living God. Moses also realized the benefit stems from the numbering our days, counting our days and making the best of every day. And that gain is gaining Eternal and godly wisdom. So what is wisdom? And according to the Cam Cambridge Dictionary, and I love this one uh, the most, because there are de many definitions of wisdom. And it said the ability, wisdom is the ability to use our knowledge and our experiences to make good decisions and judgments. I repeat, wisdom is the ability to use our knowledge and experiences to make good decisions and good just judgments. Reflecting on how people live their lives today, isn't it that we see a lot of wastefulness E at the order of the day, wasteful hours, wasteful days, wasteful opportunities, wasteful expenditures, and the list can go on and on. In this time of negativity and hopelessness in our society and the world, our country, our government, our local, local communities, our families, and in many cases, in our personal lives, isn't the time that we reflect with an honest and sincere heart and humble ourselves before the living God and confess that we do not honor Him enough by inviting Him as our divine teacher to teach us how to go about 
with our precious time, our precious opportunities granted to us, and to lead us to gain a heart of wisdom. And why should we do that? So that we can be wise and make decisions and judgment that leads to more prosperous life and honoring God and benefit everyone around us in our families and also in the workplace. May God help us and everyone in the audience, especially the family, to reflect on our lives, on our time, and inviting to be part of that. Father God, we praise you. We honor you with the life that you gave, that was shared with us in the workplace, at our district office, but especially in families and the community of Austin. I pray, Lord, that you give them guidance to go into the future know knowing that the Lord said, I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future of hope. Amen. I now introduce our district director to come to the front and address the audience. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Head of Education, the entire Western Cape Education Department, uh, Mr. Brent Waters, the Deputy Director General, Mr. Archie Lewis, and Chief Director, Mr. Alan Mayer, as well as the management of the Overberg Education District, we would like to express our sincere condolences to the family of Carol Gillian, um, to Carlo Loff, Ilka Gillian, Gerald Gillian, your mom, her mom, sisters and friends and family this afternoon, our deepest sympathy. All the district and provincial officials, I hadn't worn because I think it suits her hairstyle. <laughs> and, um, and I actually took the time to write down something. When you take the time to respect someone, I think you put a bit of effort into it. And that's exactly what we want to do this afternoon. So in short, I want to say that Ms. Gillian achieved great heights. As a leader, not only in the subjects that she taught, consumer studies, 33,682 teachers. She was employed out of that 33,000 to be one of only eight subject advisors in the province to lead the subject that she was responsible for in this district. I think you need to give her a round of applause. <laughs> you need to be good in the Western Cape to get through all of those processes and prove yourself worthy of leading the subject, helping and giving direction to thousands of learners and teachers, and that is what she did. She rose through the ranks, and she proved herself at the highest levels in education in this province. She just didn't do one subject. At one stage, she was managing three subjects, tourism included, consumer studies, as well as hospitality studies. She was one of only eight subject specialists in the Western Cape, along with a senior curriculum planner, who played the leading role in shaping the subject and subjects, and, and shaping what teachers have to teach 
and what learners have to learn. And it is really a tremendous and it's a big challenge. And it's an honor for us to acknowledge her contribution this afternoon. It's, it's an understanding that teachers have an appreciation for because you teach the subject, but without having that outside person coming to tell you if you're on the right path, there's a big gap. And if colleagues, a force to be reckoned with. So I took the trouble of just asking Ms. the colleagues about Ms. Gillian. And I'm going to repeat exactly what they said about her. The first words that everybody was saying, was saying about her, the kind was the belangrijkste. Sy het so ver gegaan, dames en heren, as om self uit haar eie sak bestanddele en apparaat te koop, so dat haar leerders wat sikkel by skole die praktische taak kan doen. Sy het laat nachte gespandeer met leerders en opvoeders om hulle te help om suksesvol te wees in die matrik examen. Anne inzette, sy was a mens mens, a true people's person. Baie sterk, onvrugbaar, wat betekent hy hoor, dit klink kwaai, onvrugbaar, onvrugbaar, systematisch en georganiseer, a staatmaker, a kenner, en a leier op haar gebied. She understood the consequences of not achieving a grade 12 pass rate. Now there are many exams that you will write. Systemic, others, terms, etc, etc. But you must understand that she understood that there are consequences if you fail grade 12. That is why she went the extra mile in this community and where she worked. She managed the second chance program, and this afternoon, the managers of the second chance program, which was a special program to help learners who failed grade 12 to complete and achieve their matric certificate, are here to salute her. Ms. Ridwan Lani, Ms. Jenny Adenal, and Debbie Lewis have come to pay their respects from head office because of her contribution to helping learners who failed give them a second chance to get matric. And from their side, I wish to extend a sincere, sincere um, wish of condolences and sympathy to the family and alle sterkte. She also promoted and ran a program called the Telematics Program, which was a, again a support program for grade 12 learners in our district and in the province in actual fact. And I heard that she would get in a car and drive to where things were not working in the afternoon and make sure that it was going right. She also played an important part in the district and managed to get the staff to participate in the Better Together Games. I think she was a lot of fun. <laughs> and she managed to motivate and get staff to participate and do better. Her family, her friends were her life. And the colleagues at work say how proud she was of her children's achievements and of that of her friends and her family. You know, I, I went onto Facebook just to check out what was there. This woman has 4,900 followers. <laughs> that doesn't happen by accident. People must actually like you. I've got 34, and I don't forgot the password, and I think two of them are deregistered. Oh, they could be my own kids, I'm not sure. <laughs> but 4,900 people that miss her and have started posting their condolences on Facebook about her. I want to read you something that she posted it herself on the 17th of July, 2021. It was one of those things where they ask you, what does your name mean? And she must have um, done that. And this was the description that came out. It says, Cal means survivor. Your parents raised you to be a strong, determined woman with a heart of gold. People with this name are known to bring light and joy to those they love. 
You help everyone without expecting anything in return. Your only weakness is that you care too much. And there was like 20 people who, who agreed with her and said 100% correct. And she said, of course. <laughs> Today, colleagues, the WCD salutes Carol Love Gillian for the role that she played in education. She has made her mark and she leaves a legacy that her family, her friends and her colleagues can be very proud of and strive to copy and emulate. She was an example. As a woman, she stood tall and she reached great heights. There is an African saying that maybe is very good. Wat praat van een groot zederboom, sterk, rechtop, rekend naar boer, met opgespreide arms, wat allemaal altijd in zijn liefde omvouw het. Een zeder het geval. May she rest in peace and may her legacy live on forever. Thank you. I'd like to invite Ms. Jennifer Brigden, the Head of Curriculum in the District and her Senior Manager at this time. This is not just another speech by the Head of Curriculum. This is bringing tribute to a, to a life that was well lived. So as we mourn the loss of Carol, I can assure you, we feel it very deeply with you, dear family, because she was our family too. So if my voice trembles a bit, please forgive me. It's just because I feel your pain as well. I would like to share the carol that I got to know and what she meant as an educationist from the Overberg Education District. It is true, she was a lot of fun. And she loved Facebook and she loved taking pictures and she loved dressing up and she loved covering her hair and she loved painting her nails and if Carol was here she'd have taken a picture with this lovely picture don't you think? <laughs> Carol was an incredible human being who knew how to live with joy and happiness amidst disappointments and heartache and pain. She lived with colour caring, dedication, she lived with resilience, inspiration, hope and love. And all these words, I will show to you where I get these words, because they're not empty words. They are words which I can prove, and I'm a scientist. She lives by all of, she lived by all of them. Carol didn't blend in, she stood out. I already said, I mean, that day was a a red day. Certain days were blue days and other days were green days. And I've never come across any person that colors her hair so often. And that's just who she is. Yes, Mr. Abrams, I too were one of those followers of her on Facebook. And you can learn a lot by that. I've learned on her profile status she said i am blessed so she lived as a blessed person i'm a march woman says the picture at the back she says i have three sides i'm quiet and sweet and sometimes she was i'm funny and crazy 
and sometimes he was. And then there's a side of me that you don't want to see. And I'm happy I never saw that side of her. I'm really happy I never saw that side of her. But I saw other sides of Carol as well. Yes, and she loved playing those games. And one of the games, Mr. Abrams, that she played on her a, on a, a phone was everyone has a so sad zone. What is yours? And, oh, oh, sorry, a sad song. Everyone has a sad song, and what is yours? And her sad song was, and I will always love you, by Whitney Houston. It says there, a rare woman like Carol is someone you can't easily forget. She is a pillar of strength for so many, and she is often under a lot of stress. But she smiles even if she's exhausted. Carol experienced a lot of pain in the past. It made her stronger, but it also made her more cautious. She doesn't need toxic people and fake friends in her life anymore. Whoever is loved by her is the luckiest people. But there will be no one left for you. But there will be no love left for you if you dare to abuse a trust. Because those who fly solo often have the strongest wings. And to that, she said, spot on. <laughs> Talking about caring and love. Dear family, I am convinced that you know how Carol loved you through Facebook. Nolene, I read on your birthday and when she was in the hospital, she couldn't anymore type. And she just said, the same one as last year. And last year, she said to Nolene, Sisters are God's way of reassuring mankind that pain exists, but so do healers. And sure, Nolene also had an operation very recently. But I look at you, I feel like I'm looking at myself in the mirror. And then she goes on to say, just for today, you could borrow any clothes in my cupboard. <laughs> And you can choose anything you want to wear today. She's also lost her late brother. Uh, she also lost Sabi, her brother, quite recently. And then she posted a little picture of Nolin and herself and Sammy. And she said, Oons was so na an makar. Of course, we all saw how, how jubilant she was when Ilka got his uh, degree. And Carlo, you know how much you your mom for you to give it. And she did it for me in my kantoor. She was very lief for you. And she did it for you for you to give it. And you behoorde it to do it. And of course, Gerald was the love of her life. There's no doubt about it. Gerald was the love of her life. And then was that Titi Maria, what in and Tachter was, what she also as a ma beskouwed. And then it's a tien peetkinders gehad. I ken niemand anders wat tien peetkinders het nie. Dis nou net Carol. From the Facebook, you could also see that Carol was a deeply spiritual person. And somehow, I can actually say that she was a preacher. She posted stories and which she, she thought was very inspirational, that would touch other people's lives. And I thought, that's quite bold to put on your Facebook page. There's one particular story of uh, uh, a blind girl uh, who sold apples at, a, I think, at an airport, and then her apples fell off her table, and uh, somebody stopped and picked it up uh, and put it back in the basket, and then she asked him, are you Jesus? And he says, no, why do you think so? She says, because I asked Jesus to come and help me. 
And then the, the, the moral of the story is, do you live like Jesus? You know, if that's not the preacher, I don't know what that is. And so there are many other stories too that you can, can look up. Yes, she was a dedicated curriculum advisor appointed for hospitality studies, consumer studies, and tourism. And then when we decided it's just too much, three subjects is too much, we, must, uh, we, 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 will, we will advertise another post for something else. And I can assure you, Carol fought with us because she loved all those teachers. She didn't want any of those subjects to go. Eventually, when we decided, let's keep tourism, let's keep tourism separate from, she wasn't a happy bunny. She wanted to, or she wanted to work so hard. I still want to see more people that want to work that hard. As a little secret, often at the, uh, towards the end of the year, some of the uh, publishers would come to me and drop off some calendars, um, which I then distribute to, to uh, the staff. And then Carol, the moment I've distributed, Carol runs to my office and says, Your was daddy not need from my own advisors, it never mind any other advisors. So she loved her, her teachers very dearly. They had a special rapport. Uh, I have accompanied her to some of her schools, and you could see there was a special bond between her and the teachers of consumer studies and hospitality studies. Um, they really loved her. And then, of course, she was the queen of Austin. And she proclaimed that openly, that she's the queen of Austin. A 19, uh, sorry, uh, 2016, we were given the offer to, to give bursaries to unemployed uh, matriculants, uh, learners who did matric, but is now at home, of which there are many in Boston. And we could, we could give them a bursary to be able to, um, to provide uh, uh, scholarships for programs that will either give them access to employment or that will increase their chances of employment or increase their chances of going into higher education. And then I called her into my office and within a few minutes, Carol had 50 unemployed youth that she could give me the names of that will come to the, uh, at that time we, we went to the library here in Austin and, uh, and, 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 and offer that to her. Now, how can you so quickly get 50 people unemployed on your, it's only be through the 4,000, whatever that she has. So she used her, uh, 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 social media to the uh, uh, much to the uh, advantage of uh, the education and the upliftment of Austin community. So she was a queen. She absolutely was a queen. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, um, I I when I sent the 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 program or the, the live streaming to one of the directors of the Rupert Foundation, uh, they, she indicated that she really wanted to be here because of the fact that Carol uh, really embraced all the, um, the resources that they made available. The director already spoke about the Second Chance program, which she uh, um, drove for more than one year, um, and she had a WhatsApp group. Um, and on that WhatsApp group, when I posted to them that Carol uh, is no longer the, the amount of hurt that came out of that group um, was amazing. It was Esther Finberg that said, this is so sad, Miss Gillian went out of her way to help adult Matrix. Uh, she will be missed. So even in that group, she will be surely missed. Then Babalwa said, I always miss you I will always miss you, Ms. Gillian. May your soul rest in peace. And so there were many, and I don't want to read them all. It is true, um, the director said that, you know, she will be missed not only in the Overberg. We got con condolences from all the heads of curriculum, from all eight districts, from Metro South, 
from north, from central, from east, from ECK, from west coast, from Cape Islands, and they all send their condolences to you as a family. Now I want to come to the district family. The teachers she served, they all send their condolences to you. The learners, especially the vulnerable ones, they all send their condolences to you. She found her hub or her education home in the FET colleagues section. Van hulle moes baie keer dikwels deurloop deur haar baie regheid, maar sachte verbading. Sy sal moes ons om haar regheid te ding geseer het, as het die regheid sien. Want sy het een lekker sin vir humor gehad, en een verskrikkelijke teergees, en baie van hulle moes maar deurloop onder kerelse teerg. Moe nie dat jy in verkeerde kant van die rugby wees van Carol. Of het nou Carol, of het nou Kelly dan is die in Hoosten, en of het die springbok het in die All Blacks is. Jy sal dit hoor van Carol. Rodney Kibbedou, wat voor in ons hoofd was by Emil Deder, hy sê, sy was een rechte teergees. Wat sy altyd ekstra tyd gehad vir die leders. Neeman het sy altyd gesê, gee die kinders nog een kans, ons kan altyd nog een plan maak. En so het daar baie hoofde, ook van verleerstof, sê mevrouw Okkies, sy sal voorwaar gemis word, ook van Emil Weder, kom daar boodskappe om te sê. Vir die skole allemaal is erg geraak, jy kerel sê jy van. I want to conclude, I want to conclude with a message that Carol said to us as curriculum team on the 6th of July. And at that time, Carol still had hope. Sy sê, hy curriculum maaikies en collega's. Ek dank die Heere dat my operatie goed afgeloop het. En al was die hospitaal vir my langer as wat ek gedink het, Dankie vir amalse wense en vir een spoedige herstel. Dankie vir jylle gebede, jylle gedagtes en ondersteuning, wat op watter manier ook al. Die groete kaartje was een verrassing. Wow, dit is goed. God, God is goed, sê sê. Die grootste geneesende therapie is vriendskap en collega's en liefde. En dit haal sê aan, dier Hubert Humphrey. En dan sluit sy af met sê, in haar eie taal, ek mis jylle erg baie, in twee haarkies. En ek wil afsluit dit, en sê, Carol, nie net in die curriculum nie, maar ek denk in die jylle district, en in die jylle hosting gemeenskap, ons mis jou erg baie. Dankie. Goeiemiddag allemaal. Die wat jylle wat jy my ken, ek is Jevro Sofien Boise. Ek is een verbruikers die die onderwijse res, die was in sekundair. En sien ek so nog, Jevro Kerel was in my onderwijse res, die was in sekundair. Want ek was het nog standers, ek was aan het 8, die begin by haar. Was aan het 8, 9, en aan het 10, was ek by haar. Toen was het nog huis uit kinder. Toen het my huis uit kinder gegeen. So, daarna sy my collega geword en daarna sy my vakadviseer geword. So, vir my is dit een voorrecht om vandag 
iets van dat te sê. Um, ek gaan lees. Ek is so iets geskryf gaste aan. En soos ek nou begin te skryf, het, het ek net al die herinneringe net gekom van die veel kerel. En so ek het nou maar net meer geskryf wat ek net vir julle kan vertel van haar. Um, vandag moet ek praat oor my lieve juffrou kerel Lofkeleen. Ek het gesê, ek gaan uit my hart uit praat en net vir julle vertel van die vrou wat ons geken het. Juffrou was een inkommer uit oudsoering nie lang toe nie, toe as hy hoostwinner in murg en been. Toe word oudsoering haar keier plek en hoostwin haar thuis door. Ek kon hou haar as iemand wat, wat hard voorgekom het, maar sy het eindelijk een sacht haar gehad. Sy was rarig een omgeen mens. Haar gemeenskap, school en jong mense, sy belange het sy op die hals gedra. Sy wil daar nie so rikkie stok. Ek het 2013 afgestudeer. Um, ek krijg wat die zembe maand in Edgus, in die oomhoog, wat ek nou maar sê. Ek krijg wat daar sê, wat so fien, het sê al poosse kreel. Ek sê wat nie, of ek het nog nie poosse kreel nie. Ek het ook nog nie aansoek gedoen nie. Moe nie waar nie my kind, ek het jou uitsoot. <laughs> sê sê vir my, en ek het vergiet. En het is al januari, al my vriende het al poost daar, al is by skole al, en ek is die hele januari, as ek by die huis. Ek het my phone nummer ook gevat. En sê, um, hier, sê die tweede laatste week in januari, by al sê my sê so fien, sê met, sê met my um, genaal wees, my emel weder, ek het um, met meneer Rotnie gepraat daar, en my gaan vir onderhoud. En ek het studeer, en ek het gaan vir die onderhoud, en ek het die post gekryk, en sê 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 my aan die dag het iets. So, dis die vrou wat ek ken, man. Iemand, as sê vir jou iets belover het, sê het redig uitgekyk, man, sê sê het net so gelossie. En ek het vir sê sê my aan die dag het iets, so sê het eindelijk my die voet in die deur, sê het my gegeen, ja, opgeen, om nou post te kry en so. Min toe weet, ek gaan onder haar werk, sê gaan my baas raak. Ek het my ebeke verder lees, hierdie vrou het nie geskroom om leerders by die huis te gaan haal, as hulle nie nie opdag by extra klasse nie. Nou, dis nou die graad 12 extra klasse. As hy kinders nie kom nie, die vrou het half hulle die kooi het, mense. Sê gaan half jy hulle. En dit is hoe ons vaak ken, man. Sê was net, sê was net een wauw mens. Ehm, Sy het een mooi hart gehad. Sy het die nood raak gesien en gejaal waar sy kan. Kerel Loof Gileen was recht het. As sy iets wil sê, het sy dit gesê. Ja, ek moet maar net aan die einde van die dag moet sy maar net lach. Sy sal vir jou goed indoen. <laughs> Daar moet sy maar net lach. En die moeis van alles sê, mens het die kwaad raak van haar nie. Want dis hoe ons van geken het. Nee, um, sy was hard werkend en het daar gewig oor al ingegooi. By die school, sport, gemeenskap en, en by die kerk. Nou, ek en vir juffie, as sy is a colorful mens. Ek kan sy met amal sê, sy is colorful, colorful. Sy was kleervol, haar haare, naals, outfit, outfit, dat was altyd on point mense. Daar was nie vir hy my sien nie. As sy was net, ek kan nou nog, dat was 2018, ja, 2019. Ek het, ons het matriek extra klasse gehad, ek was hier vir die school, en hoe werk ons vraas die hulle uit en so, en ek en die meisjes begin gesê als oor matriek rokke, en ons begin te praat oor naals, en die vrouw kerel kon in, want sy was gewoon nie toilet, en kon sê in en sy hoor, ons praat van naals. En ek sê nou van, maar ek doe my naals, maar die kerels, ek doe my naals met die meisje, en nou sê vrouw kerel ons net so, nee, sy doe nie rechte naals, ek had vir hulle nou plek toe, wat vir hulle hulle naals kan doen. So, daar is een klomstaat wat ek aan en hou van die vrouw kerel, mense, sy was, ek kan nie geloof dat ek hier moet staan om iets van haar te praat, want ek het ook een leeftijd met hierdie vrou, het ek, kan ek van praat, van ek van die school, my collega, en toe sê my baas, so ja, ek wil nie vir u nog een stukkie sê, van haar, wat ek goed kan en hou, maar as dan even so lesse achter die ander verwek, as die onderwijs daar best, ons was by Kelly dan gewees, jy wil kerel, het aard die klom sakke by haar gehad, mense, dit was die handsak, dit was die laptopsak, dit was die kostsak, dit was aard die bolingsak, en as dit nog die dataprojekte, nou, ek sê was my baas, ek was een opvoeder, maar in haar oor was ek nog altijd een kind, you know, maar ek het nog altijd so kind, want sy vat met sy, was my my klas man, en ons sit nou al rees, en ons vat ons nou die werfwinkel gaan ons nou begin, en ons sit in die werfwinkel, nou in elk geval, ek was die jongste, ons nou onder hulle daar, en jyvrouw kerel sê, so fien, hier is my sleutels gaan haal, so gaan sy my sakke nou gaan haal, en ek moet gaan nie my na sakke gaan haal, en nou, en dan was ek nog het daar onderwijs, want hoe praat die vrouw met my, en, um, ja, maar ek meen, dat, ek het my stel ook hier gesien, as ek van haar sê, dat ek altyd die juffrouw gesien, 
En ik heb ik die ik heb die hele zaken spreekt voor kerel. Ik wil niet van jullie zeggen, ah, familie, um, jullie terecht daar voor ons is toch je goud in jullie voor ons geleen. Um, ik denk hier als er iemand wees wat haar voetspoor ook aan vol staan, die ons wil altijd van die persoon op haar leven wil judge. En zo, so, want dat is maar nog niet zo. So. En ja, zij, dat was niet wat zij voor ons geweest het. Um, en vandaag, vandaag staan ik hier nee, en ik is, ik is bij je bij haar zeer. Um, we ook in de personeel kan, maar die traan het geloof en ik heb gestaan dat geschreven. En we ook ons niet zo stil dat ik gaat over die kerel. En toen besef ik het eindelijk recht aan wat het ons verloren het. En vandaag wil ik het afzet met hier die woorden. Dankie um, voor, die, voor die lof, Kilian familie. Dankie dat jullie voor ons, hier die vrouw, aan ons kon geleen het. Vandaag breng ons helden aan een eerste vrouw. Mag haar ziel een vrede is. Uh, we will watch a short video now that was developed by Mr. Ratz, and then it will be followed by the eulogy delivered by Ms. Fisher.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I think I have the most difficult task this afternoon because I am the last speaker. And while I was sitting next to Sean, I was asking Sean, what remains left for me to say? Because it seems like everything I planned was said by other speakers. So yeah. But not to fear. Carol Alcarida Gillian Loff. In her own words, she saw herself as an enthusiastic, dynamic, and result-driven person. She had a long, successful career in the education sector. She firmly believed that a healthy child is a natural achiever. And that is what we've heard from numerous speakers this afternoon. That is why she valued extracurricular activities. Now, Carol attended Bridgeton Senior Secondary School in Ochoan. And she also went, went to the Teachers College in Ochoan. From 1985 until 1987, to obtain a teacher's diploma. But Carol, like we know Carol, is a lifelong learner, and she did not stop there. She then obtained a higher education diploma in 1999 and an advanced certificate in consumer studies at the University of the Western Cape. Carol taught at Breda Rafir Secondary from 25 January 1988 until the 30th of June, 1990. Victoria Park Primary, 1st of January, 1991, until the 30th of June, 1991. Worcester Primary, from July, 1991, until December, 1991. Albert Maybach Secondary, from January until September, 1993. And as we all know, Carol's heart was here at Houston Secondary School, where she started teaching in 1994. She taught a variety of subjects, consumer studies, natural science, tourism, EMS, home economics. Her CV is packed with all the information. Carol also formed part of the management team at school and with a positive mindset. She functioned well even under stressful circumstances. With her excellent communication skills, she ensured tasks were done on a very high standard. And as we heard, she was also part of the ABIT. And yeah, I don't know if it's the proper word, but when I looked at Carol, and Carol and myself are about the same size. When I looked at Carol, one word came to my mind. And I don't know how familiar you are with the word feisty. For those who are not familiar with the word, it's a person, typically, typically one who is relatively small, lively, determined, and courageous. She is the love story heroine who's more than just a pretty face. And that was Carol. So I think feisty would be an appropriate word to describe Carol. Passionate about her work. As advisor, she was dedicated and walked the extra mile without any hesitation. And she was there for whoever needed her. She drove to the schools alone in the car many times, went home after dark, and she did more, way more than was expected of her. A 100% pass rate many years annually was a trademark. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when I met Carol for the first time, it was at a component meeting, and I remember looking at this lady with a bright streak of hair, and I felt somehow somewhat unsure of how to approach her. She looked like somebody 
we should not be wrapped up the wrong way. But how pleasantly surprised I was when I got to know the woman. She is, she was a woman of great strength. We've heard that from all the speakers. Um, we saw on the video how she sat with a cigarette. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when she took her body break, we call it a body break. When she took the body break, Simonette will also know, and we walk around the corner at the hostel where we were situated for a few months um, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I got to know the real Carol. You know, when we walked around the corner, she would start talking and we would talk, and later on, I don't know if you, if you realize it, the more you share with people, the more you realize how much you have in common. And it was there that I realized I have a lot in common with this lady. And that is when a beautiful friendship developed. And then I would say, um, Carol would come to the door, come, two minutes. Then I say, I come with, Rahajay, Hachukruk. And I would say, yes, I'm also taking a body break. She also had a very serious side. And Carol could have deep discussions on any topic. When we got to know each other, it was an experience to see how she opened up and shared with you. She had her feet firmly, firmly placed at the foot of the cross, and she had a belief in God that was unshakable. We shared many experiences, and the words she used describe, to describe things. I think Carol could have written her own dictionary, um, because those of us who worked very closely to, with her would know that Sayyid Altet Haseed Dank Jai Jai is Jaim. And, and one thing else that she would, she would like to say is, no sue, no sue, Biolandi, no sue. Then I would say, yes, Carol, I see, no sue. She helped many students without expecting anything in return. I spoke to one of her contact people at the bursaries that she helped the students with, Mr. Sean Africa, and he was very, very sad. And he said, please tell Carlo and Ilka and the rest of the family, uh, Mr. Sean Africa says, um, heartfelt condolences and your loss is my loss. Um, Carol enjoyed reading, sport, cooking, as well as calligraphy. And I think calligraphy write, writing is a skill that is really going out of the window because the computers are doing that for us nowadays. But Carol could write very beautifully. The pictures she shared would always tell a thousand tales. I don't have a Facebook account, so I won't know. But from the almost 5,000 followers, I can gather that she was somewhat of an entertainer. Yeah. We had a discuss discussion not so long ago. Um, and I was wondering when she will be returning to the office. And um, as our days run into each other and we hit the ground running in the morning and you come and you don't have time to breathe, I quickly sent her a WhatsApp message. Now, I'm going to read this to you because I cannot, I need to quote this. Um, I was asking her how she was doing, how the operation went, and then uh, she said, and I quote, Ooh, I can not wait for that week to look for a mask. Then I replied, um, Yeah, yes, Carol, so now we can wear lipstick again. And she said, Ooh, yeah, nog dat ook. Al wees skoon vergiet van die asfaal lippe onder die masker en huge laugh emojis. Ek moet nou my lipstick soek na drie jaar. And um, now I said, yes, forgot about the bleak lips. Um, now I said, um, no man, I said, mine is dry, I need to buy new ones. Mine is kirp droog, ek sal my nieuws van my moet koop, sê ek toe nou. And Carol said, nee, hoor nou daar, ek ga niks nieuws koopie. Ik ga mijn ik krap met die eerbad als net een dier. En, <laughs> you know, that was hilarious. And she sent me a picture. And I told the, the ladies at the office 
it was uh, um, Edith and I discussed it this morning, and she said she sent me the same picture. It was a picture of the muscled men, um, yeah, with masks, uh, not on their faces. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that was Carol. Carol was, was, she was, she was so part of us, and, and we will, she will always hold a place in our hearts. Now, I would like to conclude with the following. I didn't know that day would be our last, or that I'd have to say goodbye to you so fast. I'm so numb, I can't feel anymore. Praying you just walk back through that door and tell me that I was only dreaming. You're not really gone as long as I believe. You always made our troubles feel so small. And you were always there to catch us when we'd fall. In a world where heroes come and go. Well, God took the only one that I know. So I'll hold you close as I can, longing for the day when I see your face again. But until then, God must need another angel around the throne tonight. Your love lives on inside of each one of us, and we will hold on tight. It's not our place to question. Only God knows why. I'm just jealous of the angels around the throne tonight. Now, family, ladies and gentlemen, Carol's journey has just begun. Don't think of her as gone away. Her journey has just begun. Life holds so many facets. This earth is only one. Just think of her as resting far from sorrows and the tears in a place of warmth and comfort where there are no days or years. Think how she must be wishing that we could know today how nothing but our sadness can really pass away. And think of her as living in the hearts of those she touched. For nothing loved is ever lost. And she was loved so much. May Carol rest in peace. And on the days, families, friends, colleagues, loved ones, when the longing grows too much to bear, hold on to all the beautiful memories that all of us can share. I thank you. Thank you, beautiful yes. Andy. Um, I'm going to ask that we stand now, and then we sing the second hymn, It Is Well With My Soul, after which Dr. Schwartz will then come and do the thanking.
Dr. Schwartz now to do the thanking. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Just before I propose a vote of thanks, it will go for you for Boyson says, I come sucker you from Boyson. Uskalo Yalka Dantra. But we have yellow, but respect, David Simaha. You're dead to do. You can carry on a long sound for a in a ray club, and it's yoga that I can suck a head. In a coming throat, he stand and say, This were a bar for the older to see what did not do. Thank you for that, Carlo. Now, colleagues, just before I continue, I want you to gather after. The vote of things I want you to gather on the rugby field. Because we've, we've got something going there. When you, when you come there, you will see what we have for you in store. So please don't leave after this. Please meet us there on the rugby field. Everybody, okay? Thanks. So good afternoon, uh, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed an honor and privilege to conclude this assembly and propose a vote of thanks on this occasion. Before I do so, please allow me to leave you with these words. Now, so I can't even confide with you, but no means that you're a party. A great soul serves everyone at all time. A great soul never dies. It brings us together again and again. I'm going to repeat that. A great soul serves everyone all the time. A great soul never dies. It brings us together again and again. Maya Angelo. So first of all, I want to thank our Heavenly Father for a life so blessed as that of Carol Alfreda Gillian, which is so unselfishly said to impact and enrich the life of our learners and teachers in the various community of the Overberg Education District. I thank God for that. Secondly, to the family, Gerald, Carlo, and Ilga, as well as the extended family, thank you for sharing Carol with us, the OED family, where she could improve the lives of the learners and improve their life chances. We are forever grateful to you for that. Thank you very much. <coughs> Mr. Soren van der Waal, our felt thanks for the welcome and the opening, as well as being the program director. Thank you, Soren. My colleague, Mr. Kobe Martin, <laughs> he's from assessment, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of would be sports, it was great work out, so he's to say that, Kobe. <laughs> I also want to thank Kobe for the scripture reading, Kobe, and the spiritual reflection. Much appreciated, my colleague. Thank you for your words of inspiration. Our director, Mr. Lance Abrams, I want to thank you for that inspiring and inspirational words. 
spot on. As you know, to take care of me. No, no, to came to learn and, and, and know her. We are inspired by your words. A big thanks to you, as well as the, the district management team for allowing us time out of the office today to be here at this assembly. Thank you very much, guys. Ms. Jenny Brisbane, my boss, she's my boss also, eh? <laughs> A heartfelt thanks to Ms. Brisbane. You know Carol from inside out, I can tell and I can say. And that's exactly what you said this afternoon. Because you know her heart, you know her as a colleague, as a friend. Thank you for those kind words and the honesty that came with it. Thank you very much, Ms. Brisbane. Ms. Ms. Yulandi Fisa, Ms. Engels, Ms. Rabri, says by Engels. Thank you for the kind words that you bring to us and explaining to us what Carol love was all, Carol Dillian love was all about. Thank you for paying tribute to her life just as he is. Much appreciated. Mr. Wolfgang Ratz for putting the slides of remembrance together. Thank you, Wolfie. Where's Wolfie there? Wolfie, thank you very much for always, always doing that. Then, Western Secondary, to the principal, Ms. Poo, and the staff, right, with the Moelius. A big thanks to the principal and staff of Austin for hosting us this afternoon. Thank you very much. Your generosity and kindness towards our district have been overwhelming. And we are grateful for you letting us use your facilities and making this all so nice. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it from the bottom of our heart. Then also, Ms. Boyson, for your kind words from that side of the school. Thank you very much. We were did my heart grow to just so plat weg praat. And this was Carol was next fancy good thing. I can have a year when I go somewhere to play. As I saw that you North was in the car, I said, "Mag say, mag we talk?" What can I be demand? Um, he was spot on. Bye, bye. Thank you for that. Van die schoolse kant af, dit is hoe sy was. En die mens moet eerlijk wees, het jou hartig gepraat, het is baie trots op jou, jy vrouw. Right? Then, I want to ask the school, so school to go in vijf, thanks to Mr. Stoffel for lending us the keyboard. Right? Please, Mr. Poel, will you do that? Thank you very much. And then last, but not least, I want to thank everyone present here this afternoon for being here. We thank you for gracing us with your presence, especially our colleague from head office also, Mr. Lani. In remembering Carol's wonderful, beautiful, and fulfilled life. I thank you once again. God bless and God speak. Thank you. And the live stream people will need to there. The live stream people, you must come and live stream there from there. Thank you.